Hello everyone, welcome back to another week of learning computer science in two years. We are now on week number 10, that's really flying by. So yeah, let's go into this week's timesheet. As you can see, I took two days off. That's something you're going to have to do at some point. So uh, that was this weekend. Even though I did that, I did pretty well during the week. I got up to 19.5 hours. Let's just round it up to say 20. So I did everything I needed to. So how did it actually go? Okay, first of all, programming languages part B. That is done and dusted, right? I finished the quiz and the last couple of videos on the lectures and stuff. That was basically it. Very straightforward and then I was able to get into part C right after that so and you know what part C actually went very well as well I now I have a cat again so well in fact I was actually able to finish the whole week so I did all the lectures and I was able to do the homework problem now the homework problem was a bit different this week we were actually given a lot of code um, up front so they gave us a complete functioning Tetris game and what we needed to do was modify it enhance it in a couple of ways right so they needed three enhancements from us the first one was to add more blocks right so the standard Tetris blocks I think there's seven or something like that they wanted three more so now they would be ten in total and I'll show you now what those extra ones look like they also wanted us to add a button to rotate a block 180 degrees normally you would go 90 degrees at a time with this button you can swap it around 180 and then the last one this was a bit more complicated we actually had to do a cheat button as you play the game you get you get a score you will now be able to sacrifice a hundred points of your score or trade a hundred points not sacrifice that sounds weird trade a hundred points to actually get a cheat block so when you press the cheat button the next block will be a one by one block so just one dot basically and I'll show you that now so let's let's get into it so it's a Ruby application so I'm already here in the in the thing and uh, that's actually the command I was just running it so let's just run that command again so this one is actually going to run the game that I made right so here we go just bring it over here there you can already see one of the new blocks right this is not a your standard block I think this is also a new block this one's a bit difficult to see but uh, I think the standard one is four and this one is actually length five right so okay this one we all know this one we all know there's another one that's new well, it's not one of the long ones. I just wanted to show you all of them at least and get to 100 points. So uh, let's quickly let's try and get to... Ah, and here's the last one, right? So a little three three block thingy there. Okay, and uh, bam. Okay, now we have 166 points, right? Let's put this one down like that. And okay, let's press C now, right? So you'd see that my current score actually went down. And... Okay. Let's just put this thing somewhere. Ah, damn. Okay, I'm gonna make a mess. Uh, don't look. Look away. Okay, there we go. There we have our one block, right? So it's a one by one block. It's a very small block, but it's nice for, you know, filling like small little stupid thingies like that. And uh, yeah, uh, otherwise, oh wait, the 180 degree turn. So that you can see, normally it turns like that. 180 degrees instead. Nice. And uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, they really like giving me this one. I don't mind. I like that block. Okay. Anyway, that's the game. So let's uh, quit the game. Yeah. So that went pretty smoothly. Um, well, pretty smoothly. There were a couple of bugs um, with the code. Well, not bugs per se. It worked perfectly with just a standard game. But as soon as I started messing with it, some of the bits of code that was provided to us actually didn't work the way it should anymore right so the first thing you'll notice was that all the blocks the standard blocks are all of size four right it's four little blocks put together to make the shape and the new ones are a bit longer or a bit shorter and the cheat one is even shorter than that so this specific thing made a big mess because that four was hard coded in the code somewhere and now we had the option of four or five and three and even one so that was a bit of a, a situation but eventually i was able to figure that out so in the end i got a working tetris game an enhanced working tetris game yeah that's basically it for the programming languages stuff so the other big thing i did was my 
project, right? So I worked on my project again. The main thing that happened this week was that we wanted to we wanted to deploy this thing online, right? We we wanted to get it off of the the local server that was that I was hosting. The main reason for that was it was breaking very often. The network wasn't quite as stable or whatever, and then it would reset the IPs and all this type of stuff, and then I had to keep going there and change a couple of things just to get it to work again. Ah, it was a mess. I eventually told my parents, look, this is not working. Let's just spend a couple of bucks and get a VPS, and uh, then eventually actually have it live other people can also use it and other people have actually used it that's the great thing right so people are actually using this website now to book jumping castles but to do this like you don't just copy paste your code onto a virtual uh, private server uh, which is what I used you kind of have to do a couple of things so first of all the very first thing I remembered from when I was playing around with servers like this previously is that you need to put some kind of a firewall in place, right? First first thing, because you will get attacked and you will you will lose your data, you will lose your server. I've lost a server like this before. Basically, it's a brute force attack. They just guess your password. They use a common username for when you set up these servers. It's normally like just something like root or admin. And when they get your IP, they'll keep hitting it with that common username and eventually they'll get your password. Now, because they can guess a million passwords a second, so it's very easy to brute force. But if you put in a firewall, they can guess three times and they get timed out by te for 10 minutes. And if you just calculate the, pos you know, the, the likelihood of them breaking through is becomes just infinitely more difficult. Now this cat wants pets. Okay, <laughs> pet the cat. So yeah, so that was a very, very important thing. Um, so I did that first. I set up a firewall. It's it's an Ubuntu server. So you just put, I think it's called UFW. Yeah, uncomplicated firewall. That's literally what it is. And I'll link below so you can see uh, what that's about. It's it, That is the, the basic thing that you put up, right? It's very easy to configure, but it's very effective and it will work for my purposes, definitely. There's also some other things that you need to, that I needed to do because my admin page was basically open for anybody who wanted to click on the admin page button, right? Or the, the login button, right? It, I, I never configured users or passwords or anything like that. So I had to put that up as well. And I had to get a proper way to hash the passwords, etc. Because you don't just want passwords being passed um, to and from your database or something like that. You want to hash the password so we, nobody knows actually what that is. You can't just sniff it and then see the whole password right so yeah so a bit of security updates a little bit of functionality with the user for admin pages and now all the admin pages are locked for just the external well, the public basically anybody except for the admin sorry for you you can't use that page anymore yeah it's up it's running it's been working well so far yeah i don't think we've had any issues up to now yeah i don't think there were any bugs but look fingers crossed uh there will be bugs in the future i'm sure uh things that i haven't thought of um so i'm i'm gonna be looking out for those and uh, also the next big feature will be getting the google maps api embedded into my website as i mentioned in one of my previous videos yeah what else do i need to update on calculus didn't do anything took the weekend off and uh yeah that's it Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button. Uh, click subscribe if you want to keep up to date with these feedback sessions. I'm also thinking about doing some other type of videos. So let me know if you're interested in that in the comment section. Uh, you know, maybe a review video or uh, more in-depth feedback or, or whatever on my project or something like that. I don't know. I haven't really given it much thought, but I'm certainly open for suggestions. So leave them down below and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.